Namaste and welcome. Today we're going to practice and learn a little bit about this Buddhist meditation practice, a Zen Buddhist meditation practice called Yinsu, which uh, simply means the circle or the circle meditation or circle reciprocity. Or also it, it carries with it a notion of vision, so this vision, circular vision. So let's begin simply by practicing it and focusing on our breath. Uh, and as you do this, I encourage you to close your eyes and to do it with me, set aside all distractions, and try to just focus on your breath. And in your mind, this practice, this yinsu, yinsu practice, yinsu, as I mentioned, means circle. So typically this would be performed by a Buddhist, um, by a Buddhist practitioner drawing a circle, usually with paint, in a singular motion, just to draw this circle. Uh, an emphasis on its temporality, just this flow, this movement to be sort of loose and present and creative enough to allow that circle to just flow from us. And I encourage you now, whether, whether you have a pencil and paper and want to draw a circle as you do this meditation, or to do as I'm doing and just close your eyes and to, to imagine drawing this circle, uh, this circle over and over again in your mind with each breath. Out, in, out, in, out, So as I mentioned, this comes from the Zen Buddhist tradition, which is a Japanese Buddhist tradition. The word Zen is an English version of a Japanese word, which is a Japanese cognate of a Chinese word, Cha'an, which is a Pali cognate, cognate of the word Dhanam, which is a Sanskrit cognate of the word Dhyana, which means meditation or mindfulness. Uh, so this so it simply means mindfulness or meditation. What is Buddhist, Buddhist mindfulness? Well, we'll talk about that much more when we get to our Buddhist section of the uh, Buddhist theology section of this course. But for now, let's just take mindfulness to simply mean being in the present moment, to be fully present, to let go of the past, to let go of the future, and simply to be present in the now, centered on our breath to help our breath ground us in the present moment. And the circle in some ways can help us emphasize the present, the temp eternality of the present moment. I say, use that word temp eternality, which is a coin I learned, sorry, a word I learned from a Buddhist theologian named Raimundo Panikkar. And Panikkar emphasizes that eternal, that which is eternal, like time or the universe, or if there's anything eternal at all, then whatever is eternal is extends eternally, right, without beginning and without end. So it extends into the past and extends into the future, which means by definition it must be present in the now, right? So in fact, whatever is eternal is more present and more real more existent in the now than it is in the past or the future. So if we want to be in touch with the eternal, then we must be in touch with the now. So the temp eternality of the circle. When I draw, when I practice this, as I said, I don't typically do as the Buddhist monks do, uh, which is to take um, a paint, um, paint and a, a paintbrush, a single paintbrush and a single motion draw a single circle and as beautiful as that is for me when I practice it I typically either practice it doodling on um, on paper or more often just with my eyes closed and imagine drawing a circle in my mind and sometimes I will imagine drawing a circle of circles drawing a circle here and as I do try to make each circle this um, the drawing of each circle in sync more or less with my in breath and my out breath so as such and then I draw another circle
as I draw each circle, as I finish each circle, it already begins to fade as I move to the next one. Again, emphasizing, of course, the cyclicality of temporality of time, of each morning and each evening, of each sunrise and each sunset, of each waxing and waning of each moon through the course of a moon or a month, right? But from the waxing and the waning, the temporality, the cyclicality of which is always grounded in the present moment. And for me, that drawing the circle in my mind that way draws my attention all the more to the fact that reality and being is always in the now. It is always here and now. The here and now is more real than the past and more real than the present, more real than the future. Uh, but the present is what is really real. The present is where reality happens. The present is where being takes place. I know there's a lot of philosophy in there. We'll get to the philosophy, but now I'm just giving you the philosophy is as part of the meditation. The meditation and the philosophy go together. But by doing that practice, that meditation practice, it emphasizes that the past is something out of my hand. It's something I can't control. It is done. It's past. It's in the past. It's no longer under my control. I have to let it go, right? It's not in my hand. And since it's not in my hand, I have to let the past go. Likewise, I think of those anxieties of the, you know, how to pay the mortgage or how to pay all of these, uh, particularly how to pay the mortgage since I'm unemployed at the moment. But to let go of all those anxieties, those things that I can't control, those things that are in the future, those things that are out of my hands, Right? And free my hands up simply to be in the present moment where potentiality can come into being or be realized, right? To be realized, to be made real, where my potentials can be brought into being, where possibilities can take place. Possibilities can only take place in the here and the now. So to Focus on the in-breath and the out-breath and to focus on the circle as a way of drawing my attention to the now and to draw my attention away from the things that I can't control, the past that's out of my hands and those anxieties that are out of my hands, but to focus on what I can control in the here and the now. I just want to make two more quick points uh, about this Buddhist meditation and then practice it once more as a way of centering and grounding and initiating or beginning uh, this next lesson as we continue along our religious quest of creation, creativity, and recreation. This recreation, which is again uh, emphasizing that cyclicality, this circle aspect of creation recreation and creativity, which is always in the now. Right? One uh, comes from this, um, one comes from a Zen master, Zen teacher, who emphasizes that the, the circle is universal, right? It's not a symbol per se. Well, it is a symbol. It's not this, um, The circle is not a word, right? It's a symbol. It's something that transcends all words. It's beyond all words. Everyone knows what a circle is. Anyone who's seen the moon or the, or the sun or understands. We've all had experiences of cycles and circles. We see circles even in a bubble, all right, on the water, um, spheres and circles. Circles are something that we have experience of that transcend words or anything. So that circle is universal, uh, as we've talked about in the past. And another aspect of it is the circle is complete, right? It's not missing anything. The present moment is complete. We don't need the past. We don't need the future. We need to be, we can, we don't need the past or the future in order to be fully present and complete in the now. So the Buddhist, this yinsu practice of drawing the circle in its, in its completeness draws our attention 
to that Buddhist notion, uh, to Buddhist enlightenment, to being fully present in the now, to being mindful of what one can do here and now, letting go of the past, letting go of the present, and being fully, in, fully present in the now. I keep saying that. Letting go of the past, letting go of the future, and being fully present in the now. Many Buddhists, though, um, many Buddhists, though, the circle also represents this uh, very famous and uh, quite influential passage from the Heart Sutra, which goes simply, Rupam Shunyata, Shunyateva Rupam. Form is emptiness, and emptiness is simply form. Form is emptiness, and emptiness is form. This is a very deep philosophical insight, which we'll discuss more, uh, particularly when we get to the Buddhist philosophy um, and Buddhist enlightenment. But for now, let's just take this, mo this um, notion, form is emptiness and emptiness is form, uh, which definitely leads into the lesson that we have today, uh, which is on circles and zero, and that how the way that, and emphasizes that like the circle, the circle is something that we've fabricated, right? It's something that's a creation of our mind, or as one Buddhist teacher says, you know, it's an act of creativity that is devoid of any creativity, right? You're creating a circle, so it's certainly an act of creativity. But what's creative about a circle, right? It's not that creative in that sense, and yet it is an act of creation. So it's an act of creativity without any creativity, which is a very nice way of saying that. But that, um, it also draws to mind that what is, is, right? And these forms, these concepts, these ideas, these categories that we've, that we've created are just that. They're fabrications. They're creations of our own mind when we put people into racial or gender or whatever sort of categories. These are just categories that we've invented, right? Categories that are made up. They don't actually exist. They're forms that are empty. And those em the emptiness of those forms can distract us from the reality that is here and now, the person that sits across from us, the, our neighbor, our, and our own very being, our own very presence. So let's empty our, our minds of those concepts, those abstract categories, which are all fabrications, which are just inventions of our minds and inventions, particularly of language and of words and concepts. We'll come back to that word concepts at a different time. But instead, that the circle emphasizes that all this shit's just made up, right? We're just, we are, I am here and now, and everything else is just empty ideas, empty form. Or in the words of the Buddhist teacher, the circle represents the emptiness of these intellectual concepts, these intellectual divisions that we have hoisted upon reality and confuse, too often confuse those categories for reality, right? There is no such thing as race or gender. There's just the person that is in front of me, right? Um, sure, that person may have a race and a gender, but the race and the gender are made up categories. The person is not made up. The person is not a fabrication. The person is real, right? So to be present and fully mindful of reality as it is, devoid of those abstract intellectual divisions and concepts that we have hoisted upon reality. Likewise, the circle reminds us of the emptiness, right? And the temper, temp eternality of those categories and forms. You know what? Let's end all this abstract philosophical mumbo jumbo, mumbo jumbo, and just be present in the moment. So breathe with me, if you will, in and out, in out.
नमस्ते